You're listening to the New Old Heads podcast, shot live every Tuesday at twitch.tv slash new old heads and released every Thursday at noon via bringingdowntheband.com. The show is brought to you by Coleman Dental, Printfinity, Indie CD and Vinyl. Support the show directly by becoming a member at patreon.com slash new old heads. You are now tuned in to the New Old Heads podcast. podcast. Thank you, sir. My name is Reverb. Uh The crew is here. We in the building. That is Reverb, actually. Good call. My man Jay Moore with the cassette tapes on his t-shirt. How are you, sir? Doing well. Doing well. You know, um, good you records know. on them. Yeah, real good records. You know, the native tongues have definitely been reinstated. Yes. You know, not really, but you know, it's, it's always going. something that gives you. It gives you that feeling. My man. Hey, Loan. Hey, buddy. Howdy. How you doing? Doing all right, man. How are you doing? I like today's hat choice. It's nice. Thanks. I, I had it backwards. It, had to do it backwards. My man DJ J D. What's happening, man? Salutations. Everything good, Joe? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I outside, see there's a running the theme. I didn't get the memo. Everybody has a musical shirt on today. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So we got, like he said, the Native Tongues. Mm -hmm. Lone has Outcast, Southern Player, List of Cadillac Music. I'm shouting you out got Biggie. Notorious Big. I have on a uh, Reggie Miller shirt mm -hmm. made by Paper Dreams, which is a local spot. But, uh, but you know, yeah. I mean, shouts to Black Fabio. They have a song called Reggie Miller. Yeah. Reggie Miller. Yeah, that Reggie is true. Miller. That is true. That is true. <laughs> but uh, uh, did you guys see the cut? Did you see Quest Love getting roasted for his comments about everything that's been going on the past two or three months? Yes. You, you saw that, bro? I saw specifically him getting roasted about his take on Hit Him Up. Yeah, about uh, uh, the sample source. Okay, so I saw he had another one where he didn't have comments on it. It was uh, he turned something about the beef. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it was a lot of stuff. So there's there's one there's his initial comment about the. The actual Drake and Kendrick joint is what I saw. Somebody sent this to me. And a lot of people were going off on him because it was so, I guess, positive in terms of. <laughs> yeah, damn that positivity. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that did sound bad when I, when I said yeah. it's like I'm, I'm, I'm anti-positive right yeah, now. We don't right? need that in hip hop. Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> Our numbers do not do well when we go with positivity. <laughs> Death, kill, kill, murder, murder. Let's go. Yeah, come on now. Bro. And I'm, <laughs> I thrive off negativity. Come on, man. Man, listen. <laughs> Quest Love, clearly, Feed the hate. he clearly wasn't going on on, uh, on this one. There's a video, too. I wanna, I got in the, in the uh, video section on for what he said about Hit Him Up. But he said, nobody won the war. This wasn't about skill. This was a wrestling match level, mudslinging, and takedown by any means necessary. Women and children and actual facts be damned. The going trend is the, the I can't even say really originators, but... A lot of the older cats in the hip hop game mm -hmm. did not care for this Drake and Kendrick back and forth. And some of their reasoning is so whack because they use the same elements that a lot of the other rappers used back in the day, back in the day. Yep. So it's almost like now that you're sitting on the porch with your lemonade, nice tea mix. <laughs> now you don't want to hear that. And, and it, it hurts your ears to hear pretty much the same thing that they were doing now granted and i think we discussed this last week we have outside voices that being the internet and social media which is making it louder than what it what it is or what they put out but it actually in terms of a beef it's the exact same formula that a lot of people have followed since yeah. back in the day and i don't understand why people were jumping out the window and not Respect. liking it based I off of Sorry. This I I don't know it it, it almost irritates me. This we talked about the hip hop receipts and all that last yeah, week. Yeah, yeah. And, and this comment right here didn't help when he says the same audience wanting blood will soon put up R.I.P. posts like they weren't a part of the problem. He's like hip hop is truly dead. No, no man. so he's no, he's basically man. saying no. it's a con it's a contradiction no. to I guess champion this thing because yeah. we'll be the same people that are saying R.I.P. if somebody actually gets yeah, hurt. And then they, they was cooking Quest too because there's like this is the same cat that was back in the takeover on the unplugged uh, performance saying what? the same thing mm -hmm. saying this and he was backtracking like if I had to choose now I probably I wouldn't probably, have did that. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean you did, well, you it. did it and you were smiling while you were doing it so. Come on, man. They were doing, they, I believe Jay Z and Nas rapped about the same stuff, right? Uh, yeah. It got very personal. Got personal. Yeah. Disrespectful. It all gets personal. Like, yes. Like, what, 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 like one of the, uh, records to the Break of Dawn and LL Cool J did I reference a few. That is a, he is going off. Yeah. yeah. And he is saying things that should hurt your feelings. Yes. Uh, no Vaseline. Um, 
Even yeah. in battle rap, these dudes are investigating their opponent, Facts. trying to dig up dirt on them. So when they go into this battle rap arena, they have stuff to say about them that are actually facts. Look, feature behind Fifty Ryan. Cent said, said back down. Yeah, come on now. Like, let's not act like this is something new that popped up two or three weeks Man, ago. Man, this ain't nothing new. What you got, Lo? I don't know. It's weird. What like, it's, the reactions? Yeah, it's just a weird. Like the quest loves everything you guys are talking about is just like a weird thing. To Ter- say. Terry I, I makes a good point about the age group, how people are responding. That's a very good point. You think about it. Everybody got something to say. Gilly, Mace, Cam. And it's not too Ed Lover. Ed Lover. It's not in much favor for what's been going on. It seems to have a negative. Look, maybe it's because it. they're looking at some of the things we've seen in the last two or three years, you know, behind, you know, some of the beef, specifically stuff coming out of Chicago. Maybe. Oh, yeah. But, you know, that's over, different. But yeah, Way but, different. once again, but overall, like Pac didn't die behind hit him up. Nah. Big didn't die behind, you know. You know, with some little slick stuff he said that was towards Pac, whether y'all want to believe it or not. You know, Nipsey, he didn't die behind, you know, any kind of diss record. You know, and the, the most vicious records that we think about, yeah. we talk about No Vaseline, mm-hmm. we talk about, you know, um, uh, to the break of dawn. Nobody died. No, it, it was just bad feelings. And, yeah. and now, you know, L O Cool J and Ice T see each other. Now they're multi, multi, multi yeah. millionaires and they laugh about it. Yeah. True. Common, common and uh, West Side Connection. Yeah. Had a back and forth. I mean, Common was DJ in, Quick. Common was in an MC8. Yeah. DJ <laughs> Quick and MC8. And uh, DJ Quick's uh, disc record, we don't talk about it, but uh, Dollars and Cents was yep. crazy Look. against MC8. Well, he said the G ain't in you. <laughs> Come on, man. He went off on that. Bruh, album. Ice Cube, for Cube and uh, Common to circle the block, not only did he put him in Barbershop, they had a song on the soundtrack. Yeah. yeah. Well, DJ Quick and uh, uh, what's the name got songs together? Yeah. Hell, in the, in the I'm Not a Gangster song, uh, DJ Quick put out, he was pretty much telling Quick that, hey, if we can bury the hatchet, we might be able to do some music. Yeah. So yeah. it's like everybody goes and I understand. Tupac and Biggie were killed, right? Uh, and they were beefing at the time. But to what you your point, that wasn't it wasn't behind. It wasn't, the music. It wasn't rap beef. It, it was it was a, a, he got into it with a crip from Compton that had nothing to do with hip hop. Nothing to do with it. And then you know, there's so many you know. And if anything, it was more so the media than them two going yeah. back Gas, and forth. Gas in the like whole when thing. you saw the picture of Biggie and Puffy and it said East versus West I'm On like the what vibe, you, yeah. yeah I remember seeing that I was like well this is ir- I, I saw that as like maybe a 19 or 20 year old and mm-hmm. thought this is sort of irresponsible yeah can I have some more context behind Questlove oh, you want to play the video there's another video where he was talking about uh, the hit him up disc record and why he didn't like it but no this his, was his problem this is, was more about Drake and Kendrick on this article yeah I was just I it just doesn't make any sense to me. Like, yeah. I, I don't. I think that's why I don't really have anything to say because it doesn't sound like something Questlove would say. Normally, mm-hmm. when he talks, it's like well, my pretty issue reasonable, and is, I'm you know, it's like something that I'm like, okay, I can agree with him on. But this one, I don't. I don't. Is, know. It, is yeah. this the one where he's talking about how like the beat to hit him up is like smooth jazz and like right, it was yeah, more so the song that he sampled. I think he yeah. he was let's more so it. against that. Yeah, let's run that. Would actually respect. I would <laughs> respect Tupac's hit him up. If his music tracking was better, this sounds to me like in, hot takes. Here we go. No, this All sounds right. like it, look. I've, I've already gone on the internet <laughs> and spoke, but hit him up to me is disqualified, not because of the over vitriol. Yeah, the the misogynist. Like, forget all that. It's like, dude, you're rhyming over like smooth jazz dinner Dennis, music. Dennis Edwards. Like literally. I'm sorry, that's hard. <laughs> Luther Vandross can sing over this. He's not right. lying. I mean, but it was still hard. I mean, that's kind of what made it hard a little bit, honestly. But that's the typical thing that an East Coast cat would say. Or just somebody, oh, look, like one of my favorite Nas songs is Second Childhood, and he's rhyming over a Peebo Bryson song. Man, it's true. Second so Childhood let's not, is man, hard. You, could, you could go through so many hip hop songs that are, are talking about realness and stuff from the streets, and they're rhyming over, like, it's literally quiet storm records. Yes. You know, and no I mean, and, and you wouldn't say that and you wouldn't say that about, you know, cuz uh you wouldn't say that about um the Eric B and Rakim record that uses nah. that same beat. Mm. You know, 
I'm, I'm just call. I'm just saying I don't yeah. I don't I don't know where he was going with that or maybe this that was his hot take for the day but come on Questlove yeah come on that that was irresponsible to be uh, Questlove saying some stuff like that oh this is probably about how nobody won the war so yeah. th- so there's this one too where he said nobody won the war this wasn't about skill this was a wrestling match level mi- uh, mudslinging and takedown by any means necessary women and children and actual facts be damned same audience winning blood will soon put R I P posts mm. up okay hip hop is truly dead okay that's the one that I had read but I was Man, chill. Quest low. This ain't it. Yeah, like, this ain't yeah. it at all, man. There's it's, clearly a winner. Honestly, there's not clearly a winner because people are that. literally still going back and forth today about this. Yeah, I think there is. And it's clearly last. Clearly it's, a winner. What is it, two weeks old now? That's really the only last a, track? Yeah, it's uh, really only a week. It was a week, last Sunday. A week and a couple was days. It? Damn, time moves fast. Hey, Long, can you click on Quest, his profile, because I can't see it on his computer, but I think he does a clarification on- Of that? Of what we just talked about. It's always a clarification. I think this is in response to uh, the the Dennis Edwards stuff. Ah, so we are clear. I said I'd never like the interpolation when music's replay. A sample of Don't Look Any Further on Hit Em Up. I said nothing to disparagingly, uh, disparagingly, 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 there we disparagingly go. thank we you very it. much, about Dennis Edwards or Pac. Y'all turning this into a weird game of telephone. The interpolation is what I'm talking about. Don't take my stuff out of context. Well, it's not taking it out of context when you're pretty much saying that you have to eliminate hit, hit him, him up. up out of the categories because he's rapping over jazz. Because yeah. you don't like it. Because you don't like it. Yeah. Right. So that's not taking it out of context. Maybe the clip that we saw specifically, there's more to it that he's referring to. But to your guys' point, that thing that we are talking about specifically, this doesn't cover anything. No, it doesn't. That. So It doesn't. Nah, yep. man. I mean, you said it. You got to stand on it at the end of the day. Yeah, he so, said. He said I'm, I'm guessing the, in the quiet storm. Yeah, I mean, he, he said. He said, yes, yeah, it's it's quiet. He said I could hear Luther Vandross on. Well, I'm sure you could probably hear Luther Vandross on the original version as well. Come on, man. You know, I he mean, was like, what's the name? Three Six Mafia have plenty of of samples that were originally R and B songs. Late Facts. night tip is a Lisa Fisher. How yes. can I ease the pain? You know what I'm saying? So Facts. what are we talking about Facts. here, man? This is part of rap. Good call. I mean, Funkified. And uh, Big Papa are between the sheets. Yeah, yeah. So, are you mad at hip hop for sampling now? Because that's that's kind of the game of of hip hop. One of the elements is sampling music and taking it and doing and it, doing yeah. something different. So, I guess this was too what smooth. Pac, what Pac did to that song actually did it justice. And not to say it was a bad song, and I still like the original song, but something about what he did on Hit 'Em Up was just fire on that to me. Let, let's go even further here because he's actually got more words outside of the big black screen over there. He oh, says, "Oh, what you trying to say?" Exactly what I said. So he said, let's be clear on the context I was speaking on. Woke up to a grip of what did Dennis Edwards Pac do to you? I'm speaking of the musical backdrop of that record. Still mostly not a fan of disc records, mostly because of having lived in that period. The 90s, I've never seen any good results from hip hop beef. And yeah, you don't have to remind me of my role on Unplugged. (laughs) That wasn't one of my brightest moments. I feel like we kind of talked about this a little bit, right? And had a a redo, I probably would have had not done that right i think that's cap yeah that's um, cap. he said i mean i know i'm old but y'all damn i'm not trying to be pound cake respectable politics smurf over here yelling get off my lawn every 14 seconds mm, that was a bill cosby reference i know battling is part of the sport of hip-hop if there was a history of cats just keeping it on keeping it on wax i'd have been popcorn along with y'all but as most battles it leaves the MCs and their crews and then suddenly outside world gets involved those were the dark times if you were there I mean it's bad enough we're stuck in the health scare era of hip hop where a majority of people are not making it to 55 years old that's true but to take step backwards to even flirt with the idea of going to an era which turning 30 was a major challenge again if you're my age and we're there it's triggering so that is what I meant by no one won this battle. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I'm still not feeling his uh, <laughs> take on that's that. Yeah. Still, that still gives me Old like man, high so, yeah, horse yeah. vibes. Yeah. It's, it's, and just and seems, you know, we love, like, Quest is a legend. Like, yeah, but like I said, the, the, the people whose lives were lost, it wasn't, be, you know, who didn't make it 30. It wasn't la- rap that did it to them. Yeah, I can't rock with this take, man. I, I can't. I feel like Terry. I think you mentioned. I think you and Jay maybe weeks ago when you said there's a difference between like rap beef and street beef. Yes. And, and you know, like this Drake and 
Kendrick thing is not like street stuff. Mm, it's nah, just rap right. beef, you know. So it's different than these dudes ain't about to take it nowhere yeah. other than what we at just all heard. Yeah. at like all. Like Drake's already planning to release his uh, "Get Ready for the Summer." Who knows what Kendrick is doing? I mean, because he's elusive. He just yeah. whenever he's ready Drake to probably put got it another out. sexy red song on the way. Come on, man! Kendrick, ain't... Kendrick gave us what uh, gave us. This is the in between for his next album. Yeah. We weren't going to hear nothing for another three yeah. years. You know, who knows? Hey. And everybody was like, and that's been the consensus on my timeline. Y'all need to thank Drake for bringing oh him out God. because you never would. We never would have heard from him if he didn't. Drake didn't make him come out. Is that how they sound? That's exactly how they sound <laughs> when I when I read it. I think the the quest thing though, it's just like. This is, I don't want to say it's a surprising take necessarily. I, I feel like obviously he's, he can speak what on, on whatever he wants to speak on. He was there. This, he he's, qualified. He's, he's a part, he's qualified. Of, part of He's the entitled stuff. to his opinion. For yeah. sure. But, but I feel like that's just, just his opinion. And I feel like he's trying to clarify to really get us to, to really jump onto this. The it almost, it almost, it almost, almost it almost feels, it, it almost, almost feels like respectability them. politics, yeah. even though he kind of sends it. Like it kind of feels like I wish like he would have just not tried to justify it to people. Like, but he's dude, that's how you feel. He's justifying yeah. it. He's, he's going back twice. There's this, and then there's the long excerpt, the ro- long read. And maybe, that's twice. And but maybe I don't think I either this. of them f- helped him. No, no I agree. I agree. Like, I, I don't, I, and maybe know. I've missed it somewhere along the way, but like, you know, we're just now hearing about you saying, oh, I wouldn't have, I didn't feel so great about doing Jay-Z's Unplugged. I'm like, all right, man. Jerry said he's back there cheesing. He was back there cheesing. He yeah. loved his job. That's cap. That's you cap. Know, There's no did, way you miss out on that opportunity. And then did the Madison Square Garden. Con- like, if you had a problem with what Jay-Z did, you certainly wouldn't have done that. And- yeah, man. Come, come on, on Quest. Now. That's cap, bro. I, I, mean, I know you, I know I know, you with Jimmy Fallon and all that now. Yeah, you got it. Which yeah, is dope. Yeah. Come on, we, son. We're glad to see you up there. You yeah. Know? Come on, we son. Got- but that's Cap Quest on the on the Jay Z part. Yeah, I ain't going, man. I ain't going for that one. I don't know. I think in general, like if I think I think we talked about this last week, but I think in general the beef, if you want to even call it a beef, mm-hmm. the back and forth, I think it was generally good for the state of hip hop in the sense that it did bring to the uh, biggest names out, uh, flexing bars back and forth, and uh, showcasing some some of the stuff that hip hop's all about. Both of them highly skilled, both of them definitely in the pocket, both of them versatile with what they released. So all that's good to me. <laughs> and it broke up that log jam that was all Taylor Swift songs on the uh, Billboard Hot True. 100. It, and also one thing I don't know if we mentioned, but it, you know, there's been this deep conversation about hip hop is falling off. Mm hmm. This put it right back into the yeah, spotlight, facts. right, right quick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, so. They're not like us ringing off everywhere. Yeah. Know? I was in Kentucky this past weekend. Uh, one of my childhood friends, uh, my boy Jared, you know Jared, got his master's. Shout out to him. He got his master's degree. Congrats. And uh, his, the first record his wife throws on in the basement is They Not Like Us. And I'm like, this really is a thing. I'm in Kentucky. This really is a thing. I've seen videos. I know it's everywhere. I've seen videos of people dropping this at parties and like everybody's singing Bruh. along to it and blends. And I'm they like, know the bars. Crazy. They know all all of it. Like people are singing to, the whole record, bro. To yeah. Jay's point, this legit might be song of the summer. Yeah. So like, and it's probably going to extend uh, because Button brought up a valid point. Joe Button. If this came out HBC during the HBCU oh, season. Oh, man. I've seen probably five videos of uh, like black people pulling out trombones and trumpets. Yeah. And <laughs> with it. yeah. I'm just like, all right. <laughs> yep. Yeah. It's yeah. About, yeah. The the Stone City Classic is not going away. It's not going away this year. They're they they getting sheet music on this right now. Hey, yeah. hey, hey Jackson State, fam, you, the bands are about to go nuts they on this. Nuts. Party's about to be crazy. Yes, videos will surface. This is about to ring off throughout the whole yeah, summer. This might be the year I go to the Circle City Classic. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a minute. I, I need to just show to, face. Just, just I count. just want to see Battle of the Bands, man. That's all I want to see, honestly. Yeah. I, so to kind of close this topic up, I think, uh, yeah. Quest is wrong on this one. Yeah. We can, I can't rock with you, Quest. I mean, and it's like, you didn't have to do all this explaining. Like, if, if you, you said what you said. You know what you meant. Stand and, on it. You know, stand on it. And, and like, you, you have enough stripes in the game to where you can just stand on it. That's just not Because, honestly, thing. all this extra, all these extra paragraphs are, aren't really helping. Multiple. It's a lot of tap dancing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, right, I understand. Man. You don't want to mess up your political connects. We we get it. I, I saw though. There's a topic I threw here, threw in here on my way today, and it is from producer soundtrack. He he shared a video. I believe it was Royce and Guru, mm-hmm. the whole engineer Guru, and they were talking about the mindset from people that are mediocre versus people that are. We'll just call it extremely dope. We've kind of talked about this somewhat, but I, I like how Guru explained it. So I want to I want you guys to watch it and then we can kind of react to it. All right. 
dopest MCs that I know. They feel as though, like, I'm dope. I should be the best. Like, people should recognize that I'm the best. And I'm like, yo, you haven't done enough to put yourself out there. And I'm like, yo, the problem is the whack n****s will do everything that in their power to put. They will tell the world that they're the greatest ever. And they whack. <laughs> and my great dudes is like, no, the world's just supposed to know. And I'm just like, nah, like, everybody don't listen the way we listen. Everybody can't understand it. The thing is, is who markets the best? Who gets their thing in front of it? It's like Steve Jobs wasn't the genius. Wozniak was the genius. Woz is the mm. one who figured out everything. Steve Jobs is the one who promoted it. Apple wouldn't be shit without the promotion. That's mm -hmm. the point. So it's like me trying to argue for the people that I know are the best. And I'm like, yo, let me promote you more than what you promote. Because I know what it feels like. It's like, yo, I'm begging for attention and grown men don't do that. That's how we was raised. Grown men don't beg for attention. This is an old clip. I remember. Remember this. I hadn't seen this one before. I mean, not the clip, but I remember this inter this back and forth they had. Oh, a couple okay. Years ago, yeah. What do you What do y'all think, think about that from a, like the mindset standpoint? Well, no, because it, what stood out to me was the part about the marketing when people don't necessarily want to, I guess, get assistance or get help with the marketing, and he's screaming out, "Let me help you!" Because that's what the whack quote unquote people are doing. I don't think it's so much that is like, it just goes back to what I've said not on and offline about, mm -hmm. you know, there are people who, you know, the people who want, there are people who want to be rich and want to be famous. Right. The people who want to be famous, they'll get out there, they'll jump on tables, they'll, you know, uh, do things that are, are, are possibly illegal. They'll do skits for you to pay attention to yeah. their music. Yeah. You know, they'll go to jail. They'll do whatever it is for you to pay attention to them. You know, a lot of times it's the antics that wind up amplifying the people who wind up being popular. When Sexy Red shows up to a school smelling like weed every, and that makes the shade room and we all talk about it, you know, not so much us, but like it makes all those websites. Then it keeps her name out there ringing. And then, you know, this the, then it'll be like, oh, well, let's play this record. You know, if you're just a guy who has bars mm -hmm. and you're really, you know, you think you're that guy. Like you said, you think that my talent should be able to carry me as much as these people's antics. And in a social media era, that's just not how it works. Like right now we're in a situation where like you got to do something that gets attention. And sometimes it's something like the only barrier to becoming famous in the United States of America now is a sense of dignity. Mm. Because like it's hard, it's hard to be dignified and get on television in the initial stages. Uh, you know, if you're just trying to get it real quick without really having to build your brand and have people, you know, who have who are behind you and believe in your talent. Like if you have a lack of dignity, like you could get on a lot faster. You can get on T. You could be it on a, a reality show like and get famous. Like I said, you could be one, you know, on the flavor of love or whatever. I mean, I know it's an old reference at this point, but think yeah. about it. All those women who are on that show were famous at, at a certain point. It didn't last, yeah. but to be famous and sometimes they parlayed it into another reality show and maybe be able to do club walkthroughs and anything. And what all you did was, you know, make yourself look stupid and embarrass your family on television, but you're famous now. But where, where does that mindset come from? The of mindset? not wanting to, to, of wanting to just of, believe in your talent? I guess of believing in your talent is one thing. Feeling entitled is something different. What's, Feel, where's the entitled? What do you mean by entitled? When I say entitled, I mean the, the way I took it it's is a, somebody's supposed to know that I'm dope. It's an old mindset because it used you, to be, you, if you were exceptional at something, right. you, could, you could get attention. Right. If you're an exceptional rapper, if you're an exceptional singer, you know, oh, you I could, see. you could, you being exceptional at something is something that could garner you the attention. He usually took care now, of himself. Yeah. There's so, there's so many avenues. There's so much, everybody, there's 20, 30 rap records released every week, you know, that are just show up in your phone. You know, you being talented doesn't cut through all the extra noise. Yeah, I can, I can answer this. Go ahead, Lo. It's, it's meritocracy. <clears throat> it, it's, it's the American dream. It's what we're sold. So Jay's point, like taking a step further, it's we're sold from a young age. All you have to do is be good at something. Yeah. If you're good at something and you do it long enough, then, you know, you're going to. Now, granted, there's always the other caveat if you work hard enough. Right. But mm -hmm. but it, it's it, we are sold from a very young age. You know, if you're really good at something, then that's what you should pursue. And that's you're going to eventually you'll re make it. You'll, you'll reap some sort of success it. from it. And that's just not the case. And I think that's that level of indoctrination to a degree mm -hmm. on an entire generation. I think it's our generation, yep. um, you know, of it's just what it is, you know, and we think I see it in a lot of my colleagues and peers, if you will, in, mm -hmm. in a way that are super talented, but they don't put enough work in, in ways that just like this, you know, this back and forth with Royce and, um, 
guru were talking about. It's just like, you know, I'm talented. Why do I have to pay attention to marketing? You know, right. and I get it. I saw I saw a TikTok video to get today on it the same way. It was a it was a musician talking about somebody on their label was talking to him. They're like, and she's like, is this where we're at as musicians? And she she I was talking to this person. They were like, well, you need to do these Instagram reel posts today. You need to do this TikTok. Mm-hmm. You need to come up with some shorts. You need to do this. None of it has anything to do with music. It all has to do with marketing and all that mm-hmm. other stuff. And I think just the reality of where we are mm-hmm. is if you're going to pursue this on a high level, you have to be able to do all of these things and no matter how many times we say this on this show Mm -hmm. and these type of conversations pop up, I still think sometimes there's still this lingering feeling that a lot of talented artists have that I don't have to do it. Mm -hmm. Like I don't have to put the work in on that marketing aspect because my talent will shine through. And that is just not the case. So I think, I think the problem has a lot to do with uh, arrogance too. There's a lot of people that are just naturally arrogant. So Mm Once they learn how to do something okay, they heighten it and they keep heightening it and That's they, they well. get people to believe in what they're saying by telling them, I'm so good, I'm this, I'm this, I'm that. And on the other hand, the person that's better than them is just chilling in the cut like, okay, whatever. Yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because they don't really care like that. And it, it also comes down to uh, the social construct of these people. Because if you think about it, a lot of very talented people are, are kind of loners so mm, to speak that's another piece you know of what I'm it. saying you don't want to be bothered yep. you just kind of want to be in your mood and, and do and your thing do your thing mm-hmm. but once you do it it's kind of like you might let your peers hear it and your peers oh man this is dope you need to do this you need to do this you mm-hmm. need to do this and it's like but i don't want to do all of that i just want to kind of just do this yeah and it is the other person that's nowhere near as good wants to be seen so they're going to do all of that and put out a mediocre product versus what you have but you haven't done all the work yeah and, and it kind of goes to uh this drake and kendrick thing too because and not to say that drake is putting out mediocre work he's re- he's a really dope artist but he's in your face every day mm-hmm. um he's very popular he's a pop artist kendrick is not a lot of people were saying that kendrick owes drake money for his popularity right now mm-hmm. drake puts you on no that's not the case this is just the artist that you know. You know Drake because he's all over the place. You don't know Kendrick like that because Kendrick stays to himself. He drops his music. He disappears. Yeah. So go look, go look at his tours. Go look at the specials. Now, if we're talking about if we're talking about a tour, out. we're talking about tours and and shows. Kendrick's by far is better than yeah. Drake's. I mean Kendrick, I he's kind of like uh, the Daniel Day Lewis of hip hop. Like he only pops out when it's time to do a real yeah. prestige project. Mm-hmm. And then, like, I don't, he, he won't even go to the award show to get his uh, no. awards. You know, like, he just, he does, he's, he does it for the art. He'll go perform. Yeah. But other than that, like, you're not going to see Kendrick do 20 reels a day. <laughs> and that's, no. I think that's, again, that goes into it. Like, we're in, we're in a society where it, you are benefited from being active. Mm-hmm. These yeah. algorithms and the way the content works, you're benefited for, or just, populating content on these platforms and right. you get more eyes the more that you populate on these platforms it doesn't benefit you if you put out one you know one really good thing a month you're yeah. not going to get the same type of benefit as if you put out 30 mediocre things a month it's just the way that it is it's content, content 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 mm-hmm. and that is that goes counter to uh you know the uh, the artist the, the art, artistic the artistic integrity if you will yeah, yeah. Of everything yeah, you know what I mean sure. so like <clears throat> the way that it's all set up it's not set up for artists to win it's set up for these these companies to essentially capitalize off of his free labor yep. <laughs> essentially is what it is it is it I is. mean <clears throat> yeah, it's for, you know from all that stuff and it's if you really like, want to break it down yeah especially nowadays I mean the artists are their own AR they're their own promotion company yeah. mm-hmm. they're doing all of it and the the big money people are looking at that like well we don't really got to do much but kind of push it a little more than what they're doing and I, that's I saw a video yesterday from an artist that was uh shopping with the record a major label and they and the label he literally recorded them and it was like they essentially told me it was like well you know we like your music we like the way your shows are we like everything you're doing but we don't uh sign deals to anybody who has less than fifty thousand uh 
Instagram followers. Yeah, man. And it's just like that's that's where we're that's at. That's where we're at. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. like it's it's all I know. I you know I always say capitalism, but it's it's what it is. Mm -hmm. It's like it's crazy that a conversation like this comes all the way back to something like that. But it's, I think Sound wrote some. He had a couple of good comments on his post where he said, "PSA: Mediocre people who work loudly outperform great people who work quietly." Yeah. He says, "From artists, make sure I got my. That's true. From artists to singers to producers, yep. we know who's great. But to the masses, everything is because there's too much noise out there. Yes. Yeah. And he this said, is this ruining music? Yeah, that's a good question. That's a valid question. Yeah. So. And I've, I, I can honestly say I've been that person because uh, I'm Terry described me to a T at my at this age. I just like to make dope music, man. And I know what comes with it because I'm surrounded by like people like Lone." have it down to a T in terms of what goes with the other side as he makes dope music. So I learn and I pick, well you have a I, you have a very good grasp like, on it. Like I understand it, but I fall into the same category as you. I don't promote any of my stuff. Right, right. Like, right I right. mean I do a little bit, but then yeah. I'm on to the next thing. I so I know I fall into the same category. I just understand where I'm failing. I I can openly say yes, I fall into that all the time. It's like, yeah, this is dope. Um, you know, put it out there and okay. I feel, like, like, <laughs> I feel like as a, at what we're talking about, I can help people like me and push. I can yeah. push you a lot better than I can push myself. For yourself. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like I know I failed it. I'm failing at this. So <laughs> you don't do what I do. Yeah. yeah. It, it, like it's, it's almost like I had to come to my friend and be like, all right, man, can you map out a month and just tell me what I have to do Absolutely. for three days out of each week? You sure know what I'm saying? Right. Like that's, that's where it you is know, but now. The, the thing is, is that I've had this conversation with students of mine where I've helped plan out releases and stuff with them, you know, and it's so much work that even me suggesting it just feels like. It could be overbearing. It's, it's super a overbearing. It's yeah. like, it's, you know, yeah. like shouts to the Gobinator, man. We were talking about, uh, you know, putting out a record. I was like, all right, cool. So here's what we're going to do. Mm. I want you to, before we release the record, I want you to have three, uh, come up with three ideas to drop three shorts a day for an entire month leading up to that. And, or uh, no, excuse me, for three? two months afterwards. Oh, okay. 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 Three That's shorts a, a day. Yes. A lot of work. But if you don't do that, how are you supposed to compete with everything else that's yeah. going out there? You know yeah. what I mean? And yeah. so, that's just one piece of it. You know, and that's, that's aside from making the music, you know, yeah. you know, but that's the, that's the breaks of being an artist right now. You know, if you don't have a buzz, a ton of money to compete with the people that only want to be famous, that only mm -hmm. want to do that. You know what I mean? So with the subpar product. Yeah. Yeah. Or just, or just not even, not a vault product. It's like, it's a lot of people understand that they don't have to have the perfect product to start marketing it. Marketing, That's fair. You know what I mean? That's fair. And then the people That's that are fair. they're really intricate, they really care about the details, really want the, their, their product to be what it is when they put it out. They're going to focus more on that as opposed to somebody who's just like, well, that understands the world that we live in mm -hmm. to a T that's like, no, actually, I, you don't have to be there quite yet. Just... Yeah, focus, there's a lot of you know, fake it till you make it experts out here. It's mm -hmm. a lot of it, and and their product actually sometimes never improves. Yeah, they're just really good at keeping your interest. So you know what I'm saying, so to speak. That's, and I, I and think, this is even beyond music. Even this is just some people are just really good at being bullshitters. I and I think to your point, I think there are it's there's, rewarded. It is yeah. rewarded. It's highly rewarded. Mm -hmm. But I think there's a section of people that when you talk about is you you mentioned under underdeveloped like the music is not fully developed or whatever. I actually think there's a group of people that know that their music is uh, is underdeveloped and they're okay with that. Yeah, for because sure. Because it's the it's just enough it's the bare minimum. I know just enough of what I got to do so I can be lit. Yeah. And that right there is what can mess up. Well, you can say mess up or that's where you mess up art and commerce. It's where yeah, it's like it can be discouraging to someone who sees their talent is being more proficient than that person. I'm not I'm not closer to the, the brass ring, if you will. Yeah, I'm not pro, I'm not programmed to be to put to go into something and say, I'm just going to be I'm going to half ass it just so I can be popular. I'm not programmed that way. I don't understand. I don't I don't, I don't think most I don't people know what are, that is. even the people we feel like are half ass. I don't think they're programmed like they're doing the best they can and they're just willing to do extra things to make them you know, for lack of a better term, lit. Yeah, and I think some people just are more okay putting themselves out there as mediocre mm -hmm. than other people's are. You know, I feel I feel like some people just legitimately. I mean, Terry mentioned like ego and, and yeah. you know and stuff like that, but I I feel like some people either have really a false sense of where they are, or they just really don't 
care. Mm-hmm. You know, like they, they're not as attached to their art as some people are. And, you know, like some of us, when we put music out, like it has to be a full representation of us. Mm-hmm. Like it has to be who we are. And other people are just like, it's just a song I made. Good place to stop. That's the, I like that bar. Can we uh, go ahead and shout out our, our partners real quick, brother? Thanks to our partners. Dr. Coleman of Coleman Dental is our go-to dentist. He's a longtime Indianapolis arts and music supporter located right in Broad Ripple. Printfinity is a screen printing shop based in Indianapolis, owned and operated by our own DJ J. Diff. Our good friends at Indie CD and Vinyl operate one of the best record stores in North America. Shop new and used in their site or visit them in person. And the best way to support the new old heads is to visit our Patreon and become a member for as little as three bucks a month. All details on newoldheads.com. All right, we are back. Shout out to our partners. We appreciate them as always. Lone, I want to I want to touch do a reaction to that one that you shared about Spotify's uh, Spotify. subscription tier where they make the audio books and they uh, Spotify join. did another bad thing. Shouts to Anthony Fantano. Oh yeah, this is one pretty the, good video. Uh, entertaining, real good video though. Shouts to Fantano. Uh, how about I turn it on? What do I do? What was the point of this channel before like beef and stuff? I'm having a total loss of identity. <laughs> I don't even know what's going on anymore. Oh, that's right. I used to hate on Spotify. I know some of you guys in the comments are like, I don't like Drake or I don't like Kendrick. But please don't lose sight of the fact that the number one enemy of music today is music streaming giant Spotify, who have recently found another way to be disgusting and unlikable, pulling over $100 million potentially out of the songwriting community with these recent price hikes and royalty alterations uh, they've announced as of late. Yeah, if you are a Spotify premium subscriber and it's your first time hearing it here, uh, the premium price is going up. So if the prospect of that annoys you, you know, might be time to switch. But if that's not enough, uh, let me tell you why this price hike is happening and how it's going to screw over songwriters even more. Ever since Spotify managed to corner the music market, the platform has been uh, seeking out ways to kind of branch out beyond music and become some kind of all-encompassing media hub for Mm -hmm. its users. For a while, they were throwing millions and millions of dollars at the podcast market with little to nothing in the way of positive results outside of Joe Rogan now being a uh, full time on there uh, talking about conspiracy theories like an idiot. So with the podcast <laughs> thing kind of being a bust, uh, it seems like the company's new focus is going to be on audio books and the way they're expanding for them on the platform is uh, kind of devious per billboard over here by adding audiobooks into Spotify's premium tier. The music streaming service now claims it qualifies to pay a discounted bundle rate to song writers for premium streams, given Spotify now has to pay licensing for both books and music at the same price tag, uh, which will only be a dollar higher than when music was the only premium offering. Additionally, Spotify will reclassify its duo and family subscription plans as bundles as well. When you actually think of the way that music used to be purchased Mm -hmm. and valued and how songwriters and rights holders and recording artists used to actually make money from their music, how it's kind of transitioned into this, it's kind of insane. Rather than just simply getting paid off of the purchase of an album through whichever means you buy it, we're now seeing artists and songwriters uh, getting paid through some kind of like big, vague royalty pool that Spotify sets aside beforehand. And rather than setting aside some other separate fat pool of cash that uh, these writers of books are most definitely worthy of, Spotify is now instead just raising its price just a little bit and then throwing an untold number of uh, book writers and publishers into that royalty pool from premium subscriptions whose value from payouts from what I'm gathering are no longer going to be as impactful due to the fact that they're being bundled and collapsed. There's a little more here, but he's, he's already said a lot. Yeah, I um, think he's he's explained it. I think the rest of it is just commentary. Probably. Dude. We'll take over for the commentary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think uh, the, his interest, the interesting point against to kind of recap that is uh, they're going to be putting in audiobooks into the same subscription tier as your regular plan, mm-hmm. which for the consumer is great. That's awesome. For great you. for yeah. the consumer, but when you only jack up the price $1 and then you siphon that money away from music when it's already being siphoned away, yeah. that part it's super problematic. And it's another one of the reasons why I removed all my music from Spotify recently. It's 100, what did he say? 150, the potential hit for the writers was 150 million, he said? Oh, I didn't, I don't know. There was a little article that there was something yeah, yeah. flash up there. Bro, that's... <laughs> They always find a way to undercut the creative. Yes. It's just, it's just, it's clockwork at this point. We're going to add, all, like Terry said, cool, audiobooks go up a dollar, 
I mean, as as a consumer, it's like, yeah, I got access to all of this. That's dope. But there's still the undercut that's going on. Long See, talked the, about the, the imaginary money, pool a long time ago. The consumer could care less, though. That's that's how they win. Right. Because, and this kind of goes back to the artist talk we just had. Mm-hmm. If you're an artist and you're not putting out all that extra fluff in order to get attention on you, then this doesn't help you unless you're like a top tier artist. If you're doing all the extra stuff, you're making you may be m- making money off your streams and uh, your reels and things like that. But then you got you're adding books to the play too, and uh, they don't make a whole lot of money anyway off the streaming, do they? I don't. I don't know so. what their their pay well, scale it's, it's, is. It's a but, completely different type of model, right? So, yeah. I, so I don't I don't know what like the cut is for like a a Kindle. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? Like I don't know what that is, but but I remember when I would buy books for my e reader. I would just buy it. So like, yeah, same. It would be like ten, fifteen dollars for yeah. the book. I download it. I own it. It's just the digital version of yep. it. So this yeah. is or a way even to when I would do as well. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So yeah, even when even when I would buy uh uh what's what's the the platform on uh, Google where you buy books? Audible. Oh, okay. I think it might yeah, be yeah. Audible. Well, that's so Amazon saw, now. Well, Amazon. I think, okay. I think, I think it's Audible. So it's like ten, fifteen dollars yeah. a month, but you get like two or three books. Yeah. So I imagine they split that money uh, between those three downloads that mm-hmm. you get. Or like you can get like uh, two premium downloads or three smaller books, something like that. Mm-hmm. It's something like that. But you can't just get on there and read every book that you want to read. Right. Says, right, right. But now with them doing this, it opens that whole library up to where I don't have to wait until I get my credit for the next month to start reading another book. So that's yeah, that's uh, so that's messy, man. There was a there was a topic that I suggested a while ago about the value of art. Yeah, um, and I feel like this is a perfect way to kind of segue that conversation in because I feel like this all comes down to the fact that as a society, as much as we want to say that we value art mm-hmm. and the creative things that are involved, we actually value convenience way more than yes, the art. Definitely, and and. Even to the point to where, let me just, let me just spin it a little bit. So I was having a conversation with one of my students a while ago, and we got into this weird socio-political conversation back and forth about stuff. But at the same time, it came down to the conversation of, does art add value to society? Right. And his argument, now granted, he's a, he's a younger kid, you know what I mean? But, and uh, he was definitely influenced by his grandparents and all that other stuff. But he, he was essentially saying that, you know, you know, there's, you know, nobody should... Uh, nobody should pursue art as a job. This should only be a hobby, right? And I feel like that mindset in general is very closely tied into everything that we just watched and everything that we're talking about right now. It's like we do not value art at, we really just don't value art as a society. And the question I would pose, uh, and we can talk about all this stuff, but the question that I would pose on this is how do we better in today's society? How do we push the needle to, one, make art actually be valuable while also challenging this whole idea concept that uh, getting everything at our fingertips is better than the art? You know what I, I mean? I, 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 I don't know how I worded that. too far gone. It yeah. may be. Yeah, I, I think, think honestly the horse is out of the barn. Yeah. Um, you know, because, I mean, they tried to do it. This is what, this is what I saw as an attempt to do it is when everybody was talking about NFTs. Yeah. And making those pieces of art and applying it to the blockchain, yeah. you know, and to, to the to web three and the new technology. They took the wrong approach. Though. Yeah. And and I just don't think it connected with people because they didn't understand it. I you know, there are people who still invest in Bitcoin and don't quite understand it, you know, but at least that's something that they can see is something they but can they put know they know that it's tangible when it comes down to being able to do something with it. Exactly. And NFT was an idea of what the future is going to be. So you need to get ahead of the curve. Mm-hmm. You need to get these NFTs because in the future, this is what it, this is where you're going to make your money. I think that's the benefit and what a lot of artists saw that, to, to your guys' point. I think that's a lot of us were like, oh, I see the opportunity here to kind of combat the fact that, uh, you know, everything is being devalued. Right. Because if I if I sell a song NFT and I have a thousand copies of that, anybody can hear it. But if you want to own it, every time that that's like reshared or whatever, a portion of that goes back to the owner. It's like 
I don't know. It was just kind of a cool structure. It seemed like, it seemed like something that I was like, okay, I can get behind this. Yeah, but same. it just didn't work because they were making everything NFTs. Pictures of monkeys smoking yeah, cigarettes. Everything and shit. was monkeys. Like, I was like, oh, I have no value in this. It's just a no. picture of a monkey in a baseball hat. Yeah. You know, but to hang in my virtual reality yeah, to, uh, home. Right. And that you know didn't take off like people thought. Nah. You know, and I so, still can. I mean, I think it's ahead of its time. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I honestly think, as far as the virtual reality situation is going, it's going to get there because it's. Is gradually getting better and better. Like I have the Oculus Two. Okay. I've tried out the Oculus Three, and it's like crazy mm. compared to it. So I can only imagine what the Apple version is is like. But the price point is just too 35, crazy. Thirty five. What's thirty five hundred dollars? Nope, nobody's investing that money in that. Look, and this, there's no games on it. Look, this I knew that that it was too high a price point. It wasn't anything. Is when my man DJ Lock started and get one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that but, is true. But, but again, but back he gets to, everything. I was like, he was like. But nah, back I'm to cool. like the conversation though. Like, is there is there like how do we as a society because everything that he's mentioning right now that, or that that Fantano, uh, Fantano mentioned like yeah. about Spotify yeah. it, it, it definitely goes into this value conversation and to me I know I always take it there but it also is definitely related to capitalism capitalism and just like how everything is about making money everything well, right like, now, to, to, to the to the point for of the where like, not for the artists yeah yeah it's it's about making money um at the behest of everything yes and in return, it's like programming everybody to devalue art in the process to where it, you know, cool. Yeah, I love art, but I don't want to actually put any money towards this art. I just want to experience this cool thing, but I don't want to actually support it in the way to artists actually exist. And I mm -hmm. think it's kind of a tale as it's old as time, but I feel like it's really highlighted right now. Well, you yeah, I think about, it kind of goes back to uh, where I was saying that I think that ship has sailed as far as if we can if we can go backwards because all right so we have all these streaming platforms and things where you can buy books or listen to books and listen to music the only way that this happens to where it reverses is if the artists and authors all had a collective and came together and did something it comes down to the artist now because now you have a corporation that doesn't have your best interest at heart. The consumer doesn't have your best interest at heart because all they want is the ease of access at mm -hmm. the end of the day. They don't really care. I mean, they care about the product that you're putting out. But there's so much product that we can get to now. There's like, if your product is, they don't like it, I can just move on to a different product yeah. and keep doing that. You know what I'm saying? I, so I, I, it's the ease of access. Even with kids, I mean, my daughter is four and she can probably operate um, a phone, a tablet, whatever, better than anybody that's 50, 60 years old. She's four years old. And her programming now is to know exactly what to do on there, exactly what apps to go to, exactly what to look for. If she's done with it within two minutes, I'm on to the next one. She doesn't care about how much money you made. Right. And it, this is the future and where we're going. So, I mean, I don't I don't think there's no way to correct it unless I think you everybody. Actually, I think you actually mentioned it, though. Because you, because as far as the artists, uh, artists and authors all coming together and creating a collective. Creating a collective. That's the only way, though. Which, and, and again, that goes back to my societal conversation about, you know, if we if we talk about what the difference between a capitalism and a socialism is, mm -hmm. all the money in capitalism goes to that owner, the ownership class, whereas socialism, it's like it pays to the workers. Mm -hmm. So that's it supports collectives in that aspect. So maybe not exactly to that, but it's the same idea of... Right. Taking well, taking the ownership back in that realm, and 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 if you take out that record label or that person at the top, that Spotify, that entity that is only focused, even these social media platforms, that the only goal is literally to profit off of everything everybody else's work. They're not mm -hmm. doing any. They're not adding value. Everybody on the apps are adding value. Yeah, you know, like it's got the whole model has to shift to some degree, and I think it might have to take some sort of societal revolution for something it like that has to happen. To, like and the thing is. Art is always going to exist. Yes. So it's not like art is going to go away. And so when something is going to Terry's bubble, collective ideas is, is is dope. But then, but it, I think well, there's I mean, a take for everybody to it. do it. So you, yeah. you have, But then if if I'm but he asked about value though. He said in terms of value to me. It's limiting like with the art. If you limit the art, then but you can't. The thing about it is, as an artist, if this is your bread and butter, this is how you eat. Mm -hmm. You necessarily can't do that. You know what I'm saying? So you I, have. I think so. You when, when you have to come, when, when if a collective were to happen, mm -hmm. it would have to be so airtight 
and know that it's going to work for a lot of people to even sign on to it. I think it almost has to operate outside of the current system that we're in too. Because right now, uh, what if like artists could exist, but and they could contribute to society in ways that they want, but they didn't have to at the same time have to make money from music, right? Imagine an artist. Imagine you know I could do all the things that I can do mm -hmm. that I want to do to contribute to society, but I also could make my mar art freely and distribute it how i want to right i feel like it's an entire conscious shift which i don't know if we're ready for in general mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i feel like and they got ai coming up yeah that's what i mean, I mean like, it's here it's not coming up it's here and it's the oversaturation era so like you said every there's so much of everything everywhere so it, the importance of it alone is going to be devalued because i can just go i can always go get something but I don't know, man. I, I, Terry's idea is really dope, I think. But it would have to be its own separate. Like y'all said, it had to be unplugged completely from the Matrix in order for it to, I guess, be somewhat successful. But longevity spoke to the convenience of what we're of even having access to art, whether it be right, books, right. movies, music. You know, you, you talked about your daughter just being able to navigate, you know, through these screens and, and get to whatever she wants. As she grows up, she's you're going to talk to her about like, oh, yeah, going to buy CDs. She's going to be like, uh, uh, all right. All right. Well, all right, pops. You know, yeah, <laughs> it sounds yeah, like yeah. something for because what, what we've done now is we've conditioned people to not even think that they have to buy music. Yeah. OK. And it's getting to that way with movies, because now we have day it one, is that way. When we have day one releases of movies on streaming services. But mm -hmm. at least with like the stuff that's supposed to be in the movie theater, like uh, I remember during the pandemic, you know, the stuff that couldn't come out in the movie theater. My, my friend said uh, he would pay the 20 bucks yeah. to it's watch to be cheaper. Yeah. But it, instead of having to buy tickets for four people and popcorn, popcorn and park and pay for gas yeah he's like twenty dollars and we get to watch it as many times as we want for 48 hours that's a deal the yeah. mad max joint the new the new movie that's coming out for that thing is called furiosa yeah uh, i saw the trailer for that i believe that's going to be in the theater one day and i think it goes right to streaming yeah. after that and that's honestly just for for novelty at this point because right. a lot of people aren't going to these movie theaters. It's really not. Low so key is not necessary. It is, it is for people that want to hear it well. So the, the, okay. this I is, like I said, novelty. So this is for people that want to hear the Dolby surround sound mm -hmm. or the 4D surround sound, the landscapes. It's like buying a of piece nature. of vinyl. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Exactly. It's for people that are, that are, that are movie buffs that want to have that movie feel. Yeah. At the end of the day, people have movie theaters or movie setups at home. You got big TVs or projectors. or projectors and you got surround sound speakers and you don't want to leave the comfort of your home. You're going to do it right there. And it's the ease of access. It talk to, you talk More about cost convenience. Mm -hmm. You know, I just think about the times, you know, where you had to like not only convenience, ease of access. And this is uh, we talk about value. As soon as there was a way for people to download music. Yeah. And we're talking about at this point almost 25 years ago with Napster. Right. People did it. It wasn't like we was were and we're all guilty. Everybody sitting at this oh, yeah, table yeah. Facts. is guilty. Yes. Yeah. And we're giddy and, and happy about being able to do that in the cover of our own home. Burn it left it right. would take a long time for that to because download. Because it was dial up still. Right, but still, once you got that download and burnt it onto your CD, you were satisfied. Facts. And you were happy. About and, what and you're you like, just did. I, I don't feel bad about having to listen. You know, I got it when I wanted it. Yeah. As opposed to you giving it to me when you feel I should have it. We were smack dab in that era and watched that. We've seen all oh, of this yeah. evolve. But we were literally there and we saw all of this. But I remember when, you know, iTunes hit and then there was like the others through Amazon. I bought, I remember buying a bunch of uh, albums. Zoom player? No, no. Like the actual access to the music. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. You know, because like at a certain point, like if you give me an easier way for me to buy something as opposed to trying to figure out how to steal it and, 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 and right. infecting my and compact Passario yeah, with it, the, yeah. then I did that. But then when streaming, That's what streaming is, then, but then when streaming came along, I said, well, I don't, I'm not even going to buy these records now. I'm not even going to buy these MP3s yeah. now. Yeah. There should be more incentive. Yeah. You know, but degree, that's, but, but once again, it's about the value statement that people have, you know, and it's affecting every single, like it, you, like you said, with the movies, just mm -hmm. it's tw it's pay the 20 arts. bucks. We're, you know, it used to be there's no more f physical media unless you go to a record store mm -hmm. and like to buy that piece of vinyl. Now, vinyls outsells every other physical yes. media, including DVDs and yes. and Blu-rays. And, and it's going to get to the point where even outselling like 
I think about like, you know, three of the four of us are still pretty, you know, into gaming, mm-hmm. you know, but when did, when's the last time we went to GameStop, Dude. reserved a game and picked it up the day of? Listen, I reserve a but game now online. At least we still, at least we still buy them, though. We're yeah, still buying I reserve it. it online and it's downloaded and ready to go yeah. on release day. Like yeah. I, they will do now pre-downloads yeah. through Game Pass. And so when the game is when the when the game is technically released, I don't even have to I don't have to wait to download it. It's already no, it's on my there. hard drive. Yeah, exactly. So y'all will feel pretty much you would be like fish out of water at this point trying to go to a store to pick up anything. Based off how everything the is. The only done now. thing I, I would buy Would there ever be a reason the only to only thing do that? I'd buy now are things that aren't available because of some licensing issue. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Like if I found a copy of Def Jam Fight for New York, I'd buy that. Okay. But other than and honestly, that honestly, I probably have that somewhere. I just have to find it. I just it. have to find it. Yeah. But like as far as actual and the thing is, like I said, I'm not buying as you know, on Xbox and their ecosystem, I'm not really buying the games either. I have Game Pass. Mm-hmm. Well, well, let me ask you this. So with all this being said that we said, you know, uh is art valuable in society in, in the, is no it, well just keep it real no not as far as us spending money on it it's becoming less and less valuable every day and with the with the advent of certain technology and with the internet getting faster and hard drives getting larger i'm sorry we just don't it has have to be some type of it has to be some type of like wax is to the test of time so it has to be something like but i, but well, it I, didn't, but, but though, I mean but i mean i mean specifically i know what you're saying the arts as an entity, I know painting, what you're c- oh, okay, okay. I got creating, you, I got you, making you. music, all that you. stuff. Is that valuable in a society? Because at the same time, we are saying that, sure, obviously we all consume it. Right. We need, we want to consume it, but we don't place any value on it. The live so, experiences are becoming more like when you see the price of tickets yep. to go see somebody in a, in a stadium or, or, mm-hmm. or, or theater or any type of venue, yep. like clearly people have value on that because they're willing to spend Two or three hundred dollars on a ticket to get, to go to a concert, right? Mm-hmm. You know? Overall, I still think the value is low. Though now I see, I see what you're well, talking. I'm about. Talking, you're talking about overall. Well, we're talking about physical media, the yeah. things that people, you know, hey, buy my CD. Like a guy I, tried to sell me a CD, and I was like, what could possibly be on this? Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm even taking it further from a societal standpoint. Of, I know what you're saying. Of of somebody who like me who has decided to be a musician, mm-hmm. what are the incentives for me to want to be a musician? Is it is it is it, is it is it is it is it is it's there a pl- is there a place in society for people that want to pursue that as a job, or is there no value to society from that point of view? I won't say it's no value, but what I will say is that it may turn into something that only the wealthy participate in because they have the time and space and money. They have the time, space, and money, right? Yeah. So it, it it's it's almost going back to medieval times, you see. <laughs> So we're we're going backwards yeah. as far as who's going to be able to pay for and appreciate the arts, so mm-hmm. to speak, and actually want the physical form of it versus the dialed down streaming version of it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Based on something to hand down for generations and generations. Right. It's going to be the very privileged who get to go see Taylor Swift. And the rest of you, you have to wait for the concert film when it hits Amazon Prime. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's kind of where it's going because there will always be value. But will there ta- will there even be Taylor Swifts? Is my question. I'm taking it further because if we don't put value on the artist by putting money behind them, how do they survive? Wh- where's the incentive? What's the incentive What's, where's the incentive for mm-hmm. any artist to even try to create art and exist at the same time? Well, sometimes it's, it's merely for the love, like. Sometimes art is people's lifeblood. This is what keeps them going. Mm-hmm. They like to create. They have to create in order to feel like they fulfilled a purpose, essentially. Right. I think that's a section, but I see where you're going in terms of would she quote-unquote exist because I, I see what Terry is saying. I, I agree with that 100%, but I think that's a section because what is the incentive? Like, if it gets to the point, she could people like that could disappear. Yeah, I mean, it's just it's just from a societal standpoint. If we if we don't... If, if we, there's if, no value. If we only have value in engineers right. and... Architects, or which, and there's still art involved in those things. Don't mm-hmm. get it twisted. But if, if it's only these things, but we don't have any societal value in these things. Or what if it's like super commercialized where there's a pretty much a business that runs and all these artists work for this business and they just give you an hourly rate mm-hmm. to create your art. So you create your art. Do you receive a, a a wage in order to create your art, a living mm-hmm. wage, and they hold the... the uh, pretty much the ownership of your art 
and they can do what they want with your art. Don't give anybody any ideas. Um, <laughs> yeah. hey. But the thing is that that kind of already exists. That's essentially what a record label is. It well, is, but like people know. that do physical art, though. Oh, I see. Like say saying. say um, the arts is not making. You know right. what I'm saying? Money like that. So, so, what, so, what so I'm saying? hiring a bunch of artists right. of all kinds, music artists, actually uh, painting artists, things of that nature. I'm paying you an hourly rate to create your art for me or mm. for our company. And in turn, I own, I have the proprietorship of your art. Yeah. But I'm paying you a living wage. So you're able to survive. What a horrible through your art. Though. What a, yes, you know? exactly. But bro. I mean, that's I know where it's going. I know. About, I agree. I don't disagree. It. This whole thing with Spotify right now, it's a negotiation between these companies and the and them as a DSP. Mm -hmm. Nobody's gone in and renegotiated their record contract to see what they're like. It's not the artist isn't even involved in the decision making. Nah. So what you're describing is kind of what's already happening. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just in a different way. You're just, you're, different you're way, just yeah. kind of describing it in it, thirty years. Yeah, yeah. you're, you know you're describing mean? at least the the artist pay, getting paid a, a living wage. Yeah, yeah. like that's not what's happening with the majority of the people who are music is streaming on Spotify. Right. That would be such a bad. That would be because experience. what what it, what ends up happening is like to what your point is. Do people want to keep doing the art? Yeah. So once there's a void of art and people are missing that void, then okay, we got to figure something else out to get these people paid for that. Mm -hmm. So and then in turn that it happens and that's it's that, so yeah yeah, it, yeah. so yeah I, I had a again I, this this conversation was sparked by a fifteen year old student of mine mm -hmm. and I kind of when he said well you know there's no value there's no value to society and it, it kind of stumped me for like two or three days like I'm sitting here thinking like <laughs> man right. is he right like yeah. you know because at the same time he's saying no everybody should get these type of jobs there's no value in art and and it's like it's not even that he's right it's just that his mindset is where we are mm -hmm. you know what i mean and it, that mindset in general like i don't want a 15 year old to believe that i don't want a 50 year old 15 year old to think like man this is just here for my amusement this, this there's no value in this at all except for what i can give to other people or through corporations or like I'm, so it's bad. only i'm only valuable if i can give something to somebody yep. and it's like yep. ah, it's such a messed up mindset to to kind of exist in yeah and which we are in but we're not all the way in. Not yet. all the way there, so, but I mean, you got AI, so you have corporations that sure will have. You're trying. Yeah, we'll have. Uh, if you pay us a certain fee, you will get physical work versus AI work. Yeah, you know mm. what I'm saying. It's like this is just where where stuff is going. I I kind of see the future as far as that's concerned. Yeah. It's weird. Corporations, man. I'm telling you, that's why. That's why I'm so. That's why I talk about it all the time because it's such it's a about problem. To get, it's about to get spooky. It's out such here, a man. problem. Yeah. It's about to get spooky out here. It's about to be like that Ready Player One is making a whole lot of sense right now. <laughs> yeah. Have y'all seen that movie? Yeah, yeah, I know exactly what It you're makes about. a whole lot of sense. Multiple times. Yeah. Yeah. Well. It's actually one of my now favorite. Now got me want uh, to go watch it. It's one of my favorite more recent movies that have came out in probably I the love, last I love. Yeah, years. I streamed it. I, yeah. yeah, I really like <laughs> I really like the concept of it, you know, like the idea of it. And I think it would be dope for that to exist. Mm -hmm. It's just like. It kind of does exist, though. Uh, but I mean, like to the extreme, like yeah. in the movie. You know yeah, I, mean? I feel yeah. you. Yeah. But like, it's kind of like back in it, back in '98 when Enemy of, Enemy of the State movie came out. Remember seeing those uh, Will Smith? With, yeah, with Will Smith seeing the cameras and stuff in the sky that was yeah. tracing people. Mm -hmm. That stuff is so real right now. It's like even beyond that. And I remember watching that movie in '98, like. This is crazy. Like, can they really do that? You know what I just found out about? I kind of feel dumb about it. What I just found out that the internet existed in the 60s. Oh, yeah. And yeah. it was it was for military use. They, oh, used yeah. it. they didn't make it available to the public until obviously mm -hmm. they did. But I was like, oh, wow, this this has existed for like 30 years before we even talked about it. Yeah. I was like, so we just weren't able to get on there and do the same type of activity. Well, we couldn't do anything because it was yeah, like right. only military. Right. It was yeah. bulletin boards. Like I, I remember that's look, I found out about the internet when Mortal Kombat two came out. Mm. <laughs> no, I'm just serious. Cause like, um, I was like, how do these people know the moves day one? Oh, yeah. And it was like, Oh, we saw it on the bulletin board. I was mm -hmm. like, well, like at school or you yeah. had to get a uh, Nintendo <laughs> power like or something like that. Yeah. So no, it was like, it was like, there was, was people who game, had access to like magazine. war games. Game type pro. Stuff. Game pro. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, they had access to, you know, I mean, you could see like movies about the internet, like war games with Matthew Broderick, you mm -hmm. know, like that was a, the internet, but like what nobody trying to do all that. Yeah. Yeah.
NewOldHeads.com for all the education you need this year as always. If you see it, like it, subscribe, and remember to leave us a rating. Uh, five stars is what we prefer. I think Jay Moore says if you hating if you're not doing that at this point. Yeah. Uh, we appreciate the support as always, and we'll see y'all next week. Yep. Peace. In a minute. Support mm-hmm. directly on Patreon. Patreon, yes indeed.